I'm going to share with you my secrets for how I pattern and cut a 16th century smocked shirt. And I'm also going to walk you through how you can personalize that diagram for your individual measurements. But first, if we haven't met, I'm Lelena with Thimble and Plume, and we are historical costumers, and we have a love for sharing the things that we have learned in order to empower you to be the best costumer you can be. You know what is so frustrating? When you're trying to figure out how something was made and you don't have access to the surviving garments that you know exist, and then the information you find about those garments don't include the details that you really want to know. So you work with what you can get. And that is what I have done with the pattern diagram that I am sharing with you today. Now I'll go into a little bit more detail in a bit, but first let's go take some measurements. So first we'll start by measuring our neck height. You'll start just below your chin, measure down the front of your neck, right to the divot at the bottom of your neck. Next, you'll measure your neck circumference by measuring around your neck, making sure to keep the tape parallel to the ground. Next, we'll measure the shoulder seam. So you'll start out from the side of your neck and measure out to the tip of your shoulder. Next, you'll be measuring your neck to hem. So measure from the base of your neck down to where you would like the hem to be. Next is your shoulder tip to the first knuckle. So measure from the tip of your shoulder all the way down your arm right to their first knuckle. Next, we'll be measuring around the wrist. So just take your tape and place it around your wrist. Lastly is your duck hand. Hold your hand like a duck and measure around the knuckles. Great, so we've got our measurements. So next, before we can move on, we do need to do one more thing. We need to determine the fullness that we need for the pleats in our shirt. It's really important at this point that you know what the design or what style of embroidery you're going to be putting on top of those pleats. Then you're going to do a test piece. So you'll want to create a small sample of what your final project will look like. So start out with a 10 inch strip of your fabric, pleat it up exactly as you plan to do for your finished piece, and then apply the embroidery or trim or whatever embellishment you plan on using to this small sample. Once your sample is completed, lay it flat and measure it. Then take that number and divide it into 10. The resulting number is your fullness, and we'll be using that number to determine some measurements for the pattern diagram. This PDF that I have here will be available. I'll put a link to that in the description box. So now that we have all this information, we can take that, we're gonna do a few calculations so that we can personalize a pattern for you. Most of the smock shirts that you'll see on the internet have the sleeves go into the collar, much like a modern day bishop or raglan sleeve construction, but it never really worked for me. I often found that having that extra added bulk in the collar didn't really work well with the smocking designs that I wanted to use. I also found it kind of uncomfortable because today's linen is not nearly as fine as the linen that would have been produced in the 16th century. So I went searching for a period alternative. Then one day I came across one of the Stura shirts. After pouring over the diagram, I realized that the shirt had shoulders and that the neck was gathered into a band. And then after some further research, I also noted that Beatrice Nutz mentions that the Langberg Castle finds have wide bodies gathered into a collar band and sleeves attached to the shoulders, exactly like the Stura shirt. I knew I was on to something. So, Using the basic Stura shirt diagram, all I did was added a built-on collar, which is not unheard of for German patterning during this time period. Needless to say, I was pretty giddy at my ingenuity, and I thought I was really clever. So I ran out and shared my findings with Malin. Turns out she'd been doing that for years. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about how you can personalize the diagram that I made to fit you. So we have created a PDF that has the measurements you'll need, the instructions, as well as the diagram. That is available for download and we'll put a link in the description below. Now let's translate the measurements we took and translate them into the measurements we will need for drafting. 
First off, go ahead and make sure that all of your measurements are filled in in step one of the worksheet here. Also, you're going to want to fill in your desired fullness that we determined based on the uh, smocking sampler that we did earlier. Next, decide what sort of seam allowance that you'll be doing and write that down. Next step is to determine your collar height. Decide on a height that is shorter than the neck height measurement you took that is comfortable and that has the aesthetics that you prefer. We're next going to decide what our finished neck is going to be and to do that we're going to do a quick calculation. So you'll take the neck circumference that you measured in the first step then you're going to add two inches to that. Mark that on the line. Next step we're going to determine the drafting neck. In order to do this, go ahead and take the finished neck that we just figured out, multiply that times your desired fullness, then you're going to divide that number by two, and that goes in the line. Now, sleeve fullness is the next thing to decide on, and that's pretty much a preference. You'll want it to be larger than your bicep, and most sleeves that I have measured are between 18 to 24 inches wide. Next, you'll want to determine your drafting cuff. So what you'll want, this is for your sleeve cuff. If you will be having a cuff that opens and closes, you'll want to use your wrist measurement. Add a quarter inch of ease to that for your drafting cuff measurement. If not, if you're just going to slip your cuff on and off, off and on, then you will just be using your duck hand measurement. So next step, we are going to move on to step three where we were, will determine the measurements we will be using on our diagram. So in order to do that, we'll take, we'll figure out the body length first. And in order to do that, we're going to take our neck to hem minus 29. And then I'm gonna add my collar height. I decided of a height of three. Then I'm gonna add two seam allowances. Now, since I'm using a half inch seam allowance, that is one for a total of 33. Moving on to body width, I'm going to take my drafting neck from the step two, previous step. We will then add the shoulder seam to that twice. So I have 24 plus five plus five. I'm gonna add two seam allowances. So that's plus a half plus a half for a total of 35. Next collar height is simply your collar height plus one seam allowance. So I have a collar height of three and a seam allowance of a half equaling three and a half. Moving on to collar length, we'll take our drafting neck and we'll add two seam allowances to that. So I have a drafting neck of 24 plus two seam allowances, which equals one inch to give me a total of 49. Then for the next step, we're going to figure out our shoulder seam by taking the shoulder seam measurement and adding our seam allowance to that. Sleeve length, we'll be taking the shoulder to our knuckle and we're gonna add our any additional desired length that you have to that. So if you wanna add, add an extra puff in there or if you will be blousing this out from underneath uh, slash sleeves or something, go ahead and add that width and length in there. And then you're gonna also add two seam allowances. So for me, I, my sleeve length is 23. I'm not adding any additional length. Then I have two half inch seam allowances for a total of one, which gives me a 24. Uh, sleeve width, we are going to take our sleeve fullness and we're going to add two seam allowances to that. For our next day length, we will take our finished neck from the previous step two, and then we're going to add two seam allowances to that. For the width, we are going to take the collar height plus one seam allowance. The wrist stay is our drafting cuff plus two seam allowances. And for your wrist stay width, you'll take the width of the smocking design that you're using on your cuff, sleeve cuff, and you're going to add two seam allowances for that. Okay, so the next step is to just transfer all the figures that we just did in step three onto our cutting diagram. So we will go ahead and add, start with length of the body, then width, go ahead and mark out the collar length and height, your shoulder seam, your length and width of your sleeve, 
the wrist stay, neck stay, and gussets. If you are using an optional slit, you can mark that as well. And then mark, go ahead and mark out your what you will be using for your neck slit. To determine the size of the gussets that you'll be using, typically if you are a small medium person, you will want to do four inches or 10 centimeters. If you are larger, then you will want to use five inches or 12 centimeters. That does include seam allowance. For the neck slit, you'll want to do six to eight inches or 15 to 20 centimeters, depending on how big your head is. Also, you have an option to add a slit to the side seams if you want at the bottom. Uh, if you do choose to do that, you're looking at about four to six inches or approximately uh, 10 to 15 centimeters. So next up, you'll need to determine how you will be laying your pieces out on your fabric. Since we're not actually using a paper pattern here, you'll want to know ahead of time how you'll be doing this. So what you'll do is you'll figure out how wide is your fabric. Now I have 55 inch wide fabric. So if I look at the fact that I have a width of 35 of my body piece, which I am going to mark down here, I know that leaves me, well, I'm a little short to have a sleeve in there, so I'll just cut a narrower sleeve. It's only an inch narrower. So I will go ahead and put that sleeve right next to the body uh, piece. Then what I can do is I can draw the second sleeve below the first sleeve and the second body piece below the first body piece. And then you can see over in the corner here, I have a little bit left over. And that is where I can go ahead and put the wrist stays, the neck stay, and the gussets. All right, so now we've got our diagram all personalized. Next step is we're going to cut out our fabric. So make sure before you get to this step that you have prepared it properly and that it has been washed in starch. And I will link a video in the description below that shows you exactly how to do that. I've got my fabric right here. And if you watched the last video, we know we had a little bit of a tragedy. So now it's dry. I haven't pressed it yet, but it, already is really nice. So I'm very excited about it. I'll be pressing it before I begin, but I wanted to share so that those of you who saw my last video would know the outcome. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would recommend mwah, chef's kiss. The wheat starch worked out great, very happy with it. So now I'm gonna go press this fabric. I'll come back and we'll cut it out together. So first things first, you always want to start with a nice straight edge. So go ahead and make a clip at one of your cut ends, pull the thread, and then what you'll be able to do is follow that thread line um, as you cut. And you'll do this all the way across the fabric. So our next step is we are going to measure out the length of the body panel. So go ahead and take the measurement from your body panel measure it out on your fabric and where you find that mark, go ahead and clip it with your scissor or you can use a pencil and make a pencil mark if you're more comfortable doing that. Okay, once you've done that, go ahead and repeat. You're gonna again, mark out a second body panel. So you've marked out the front, now you need to mark out the back. Okay, so where you made that second mark, that is the bottom of the second panel. Now that marks also the longest length of the pattern pieces as we laid them out previously. So we're gonna cut all the way across the width here. You want a straight line, so of course you will pull a thread and then use that as a guide to cut across. Cut all the way across the width of the fabric. So next we're going to cut the width of our body panel. So rotate that fabric around so that you have the cut edge facing you. You're gonna measure out the width of your body panel. So check the diagram for that. Measure that out across the cut edge of your fabric, which is also the width of the fabric, and then mark it. 
Um, again, I'm doing a snip, you can use a pencil. Now my sleeve and my body end up creating, taking up the full width of the panel, of the fabric panel, so I don't have to cut anything off for my sleeve. If you do, go ahead and mark that now. And then we're going to snip, pull some threads, and then cut all the way across the, or excuse me, all the way along the length of the fabric, all the way to the bottom of the fabric. And now we need to cut the length of our sleeve. So check your diagram to see what that length is. Measure it out and make a clip or a mark and clip that out and then pull your thread and go all the way across the width of that particular piece of fabric. Uh, once that's done, you'll need to repeat for the other sleeve. So what I like to do is I will actually just, you could either measure it or you can use the sleeve that you've already cut to measure it, which is what I ended up doing. Cutting across it, pulling the thread and snipping it to the other side. And then you end up with two lovely sleeves. So one of the things I have found that is a good practice to get into is that when I finish cutting out a project, I label each of the pieces so that when I come back to it, I know what they are. Too many times I've put aside projects because I wasn't able to work on them and ended up coming back to them and not knowing what they were or what the pieces were. So I do this now and it saves me a ton of heartache. So you still have your long piece that you marked your body length on. Go ahead, pull that out and continue cutting across that by pulling that thread out and using that as a straight line to cut across your fabric. And you'll cut all the way across the width that is there and that should leave you with two lovely body pieces. Now we'll need to measure out the collar and cuff stays. So. Take the remaining piece of fabric that you have, measure the cuff width, pull the thread, cut it straight. And then what I did is I, I cut the whole strip off, measured it and cut it down to the correct length that I needed to, uh, for the two different stays. Then I moved on to the collar stay. And first I pulled a thread going the long way, uh, cutting it all the way off. Then I went ahead and measured up from the short edge and then cut across so that I had the correct size. And then I just folded them together and labeled them so that I know what they are. Should I walk away from this uh, project, but I won't because you're coming along with me. So now we just need to move on to the final thing that we need to cut out, which is our gussets. So pretty much we're just following the same procedure here. And finally, we need to cut out our gussets. So following pretty much the same thing, depending on what size you want them to be, measure that size out, pull your thread, cut them straight. And then once that's done, uh, put them in a pile and uh, label them with what pattern piece they are. And now we are ready to shape the neck and shoulder areas. So take your two body pieces, lay them on top of each other, and then you want to fold them lengthwise. Line up all the cut edges at the top of the body pieces, making sure that they are lined up very precisely. And then you'll want to pin them in place so that they don't move. You want them secured very nicely and you want everything very, very precise. So now we're going to measure the color length that we need, starting from the fold and measuring out. Remember, we only need half at this point because it's folded in half. Then we'll mark down the length of the collar height then go to the edge of your fabric mark the collar height then from there measure down an inch and a half place your ruler at the edge of the collar and at the mark that you just made and then draw a, diag a diagonal line it should be approximately the length of your shoulder now whatever you do do not forget to add seam allowance on this shoulder seam you want 
to add whatever seam allowance you added to the rest of the measurements earlier. Everything else has already been included. This is the only one that doesn't have it on there. So make sure that you add it before you cut. You'll cut along that line that you just drew and then cut down from the collar line. And there it is. And that's the shape that we want. So I pretty much just fold it up, uh, put, put a label on it. And then what I like to do is I'll put everything in a pile, including the diagram and my, uh, my sample smocking so that if I do come back to it later, I know exactly what I was doing. So next up is construction, but that's the next video. So check out this playlist here in the meantime. Mm -hmm.